Hey everybody! All right, so let's start with a number routine. This is supposed to be something that we're like, oh yeah, we've been doing this a lot recently. So today, we're gonna be taking a look at a hundreds chart, and it should look familiar to you because we've been looking at these the last week. Um, this is a modified hundreds chart. It goes from one all the way to 130. They want us to start, it says, at 17. So your first job is to find number seven. Here are the teenage numbers right here. Oh, there's my 17. All right. So now it wants us to count by tens. So yesterday we did this and we figured out that counting by tens means you get another 10. So we used to have one 10 and then all of a sudden, we got another 10. Now we have two 10s and then we have another 10, right? See how the 10s are getting bigger? The ones are not changing in the number. We still have seven, 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 but the 10s every time are getting bigger by one number. So we went 17, 27, 37, 47, 57. You could say this with me, I bet. 67, <laughs> 77, 87. I'm going to stop right there because the book says start at 17, check, count by tens. Mm -hmm. I got that going. And it says stop when you get to 87. Nice. All right, let's pick a new number to start at. Um, just for fun, let's start at 33. So I'm going to go ahead and say we are at 33. And I'm gonna do something a little differently this time. Instead of going down and getting another 10, I'm actually gonna go up. And notice what happens here. I lost one of my 10s. I used to have three, whoop, but now I'm down to two. If I go up again, I lose another 10. And now I only have one 10 in those three ones. If I go up a last time here, I don't have any 10s at all. I just have the three. So a good rule of thumb is on a hundreds chart, if you move up, that's the same. So if I move up as minusing a 10. But if you're moving down on the number line, or I should say on the hundreds chart, if you're going down, you are changing the tens, not smaller, but you're changing that 10 to get bigger each time. Excellent. And I remember this from the other day. All right, let's talk a little bit about our learning target. So yesterday we talked about how, about how big an inch was. An inch is about two of your fingers. We measured medium things like markers and color crayons, great for measuring notebooks. Inches would be perfect for measuring a water bottle. But there are some things in the world that are bigger Right? And if I used inches, I could do it, but I would have so many inches to count. Like if I measured like an elephant, or if I was measuring a big boat, or if I was measuring a football field. So they have other units of measure for medium and large things. So the first one I want to talk about is feet. And then I'll put some feet together and make something called yards. And if I have any football fans, You'll always hear them talk about the yard line or that was a 20 yard pass, right? They measure things on the soccer field or on the football field in yards because they're so big. So learning target today, I can measure in feet and yards. Okay, so here's the question. Now, how could you measure the length of this math book? How could you measure the length of this table? Well, the math book might be perfect for inches. You could just use your inch ruler and go along there. But the table's really big, actually. It's much longer than the math book. So you could use inches or you could use feet. Let me show you what I mean. Now, we learned yesterday that there are 12 inches on a ruler, always. And the reason they picked 12 is 12 inches is the same thing as one foot. So if you use the little lines on the ruler, you're measuring in inches. If you use the whole ruler, 
you're measuring in feet. That's one foot. So, if you go from the space from zero all the way to the 12, we can call that 12 inches, or we would just say one foot. They're the same thing. Knowing that, how long is this math book then? Well, if I was measuring in inches, I would say it goes from the zero all the way to the 12. I would say this is 12 inches. If I didn't want to use inches, I would just say, hey, look, it's the same as one whole foot. So this math book is 12 inches or one foot. So I could, this would be a fine answer, 12 inches. Or I could say one foot. Both are fine. Because if you remember, that whole ruler is one foot. It should be from the zero to the 12, to be perfectly honest. Next. All right. Some things, though, are even bigger than a foot. Oh, by the way. If you want to know how big a foot is, you can always go from your elbow to the top of your fist. That's about one foot. Um, if you stretch out your arms all the way from one fingertip on one side all the way to the other fingertip on the other side, that is called one yard. It's the same length as your dad's leg. It's the same length as the countertops in your house. It's the same width as the refrigerator. It's about... Um, 36 inches, it's the same as three feet, and we call it one yard. This is a yardstick. So here is 12 inches, that's one foot. Here is the second 12 inches, that's two feet. And then if you go to that last one, 36 inches is the same as one yard. I'll just show you that, I'll prove it to you. Right there, one foot. Two feet, three feet. Three feet is the same as one yard. 36 inches is the same as one yard. These units can all be used together. You just pick whichever one makes the most sense for what you're measuring. It really depends on the size. Um, you could say this table was one meter. You could say this table was three feet. Oh, did I say meter? Um, you could say this table was one yard. You could say this table was three feet. Or you could say this table was 36 inches. They're all the correct answer. Um, there is another tool that maybe you've seen your mom or dad using around the house. It is a measuring tape. It can measure in inches, feet, um, it probably doesn't measure in yards. That's kind of not used too much, but um, it's a very good tool. If I was measuring this table, I would probably use a measuring tape rather than the rulers. Okay, so how long is this umbrella, people? Mm -hmm. You could use yards, feet, or inches. How long is it? 36 inches? Three feet, one meter, one yard, I should say. Mm -hmm. So today you will be measuring a keyboard. You will be measuring a big shelf. And then you will be thinking about your mom and dad's car. Should you use the ruler to measure mom's car? Do you think you would use a yardstick to measure mom's car? Do you think you would use the measuring tape which one would make it easiest to measure mom's car? And then maybe just have a good answer as to why you chose what you did. Why or what would you use to measure a tissue box? Would you be using a ruler, a yardstick, a measuring tape? A couple more for you to do. This is my friend, Emily. She um, actually creates the blueprints for airplanes, and one of the things she has to do is measure and label the length of an airplane. What should she be using? Inches, 
when she's drawing? Should she be using um, feet when she's labeling items? Or should she be using yards when she's labeling the length of an airplane? What would make the most sense and why? Probably more than one correct answer there. And then the last one I think I want you to do today is about Wilma. She's um, busy with her mom building a tree house. They need to measure each board before cutting it to the correct size. What measuring tool should they use to do that? And then maybe explain your thinking behind that. When you're all done with that, there's a fun math game for you on the next slide. Thanks everybody. See you soon.